Hello, it's Andy Chapman. Uh, today we're going to do a really quick comparison on the differences between uh, fully modulating hot gas reheat and hot gas bypass. Uh, these are two terms that sometimes get confused uh, in our industry, and I wanted to shed some light on these two processes, so hopefully that uh, specifications become a little more clear. So, um, fully modulating hot gas reheat is an is a active humidity control uh, process that's used. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the refrigeration process in order to explain it. So typical process, you have liquid coming out of your condenser that's fed to uh, TXV. Uh, that liquid is uh, run through your evaporator coil where it's evaporated into a low pressure, low temperature gas. It's then sucked into uh, the compressor where it is um, compressed into a high temperature, high pressure gas. In a normal refrigeration process, that high pressure gas would be fed back through the condenser where it would condense to the liquid and it would repeat the process. But in a hot gas reheat uh, system, a portion of that high pressure, high temperature gas is actually able to be bled through a reheat coil, which is a physical coil around located downstream of the evaporator, uh, which reheats that, that air uh, back up to a, a neutral condition. Uh, it actually forms liquid. Uh, that liquid is then fed all the way back through the condenser to make sure that it's fully condensed and uh, the, this refrigeration process repeats itself. So in a 100% outside air or a recirc uh, application, um, air that's at a higher temperature and higher humidity is, is passed over the evaporator coil where it's cooled down to some lower dew point uh, temperature. You know, in standard outside air applications, maybe 52, 53 degrees. Uh, in a surgical suite, you might be uh, cooling it down to 46 degrees. Um, and then that air is reheated by a portion of that hot gas back up to uh, space neutral condition, uh, you know, typically in an outside air unit, maybe 75 degrees, maybe in the surgical suite, it's 68 degrees. So this process allows us to uh, actively control humidity by wringing out moisture uh, out of an evaporator coil and then not overcooling a space by reheating that air with high pressure, high temperature gas from the compressor. Um, the other process is hot gas bypass, and this is really a frost prevention uh, device with a mechanical valve. Um, so typically when you've got um, suction gas being pulled out of the evaporator, uh, it gets pulled into a compressor, turned into a high pressure, high temperature gas fed through the condenser where it condenses to a liquid and then is fed through the TXV. But in situations where uh, you have too much refrigeration capacity for the load going over the evaporator, whether that's a VAV application with, you know, uh, minimum airflow or uh, an outside air unit um, that you're entering evaporator temperature is much lower than design. When you feed the full amount of liquid through the TXV uh, and there's no load, the suction pressure and the suction temperature starts to drop uh, dramatically into what sometimes can be a freezing condition. Uh, the hot gas bypass valve actually has a bulb that is strapped to the suction line. And when that bulb cools, it actually allows a spring in this hot gas bypass valve to open and some of that hot gas uh, is allowed to flow through the valve and, uh, and enter uh, <clears throat> right before the evaporator, which artificially elevates the suction pressure and the suction temperature of the evaporator so that you don't freeze your coil. So this is hot gas bypass. This is a frost prevention device that allows your compressor to run longer uh, without without way overcooling your space or freezing your coil. Another version 
uh, of hot gas bypass is called a raw wall device or an APR control valve. And uh, the same premise, you have a, a bulb strapped to the suction side of, of your compressor. And when that starts to get too cold into a freezing condition, uh, some hot gas is, is allowed to be blended with some liquid to make mixed gas, what is then also blended with your low pressure, low temperature suction gas to artificially raise um, your suction line. Uh, the difference is, is in this system, you're actually bypassing liquid, so you're not feeding all of your liquid uh, to your evaporator. So you're re effectively reducing the capacity of your evaporator by bypassing both hot gas and liquid. So again, this is another frost prevention device that allows your compressors to run longer. Um, but it is a mechanical device and it's really only sensing the suction temperatures of your refrigeration system um, and make, making sure that you're not going to freeze your evaporator coil. So I appreciate you listening. And um, if you've got any questions uh, on these refrigeration devices or the processes, or if you need some help with, um, with a low dew point application, uh, feel free to give me a call. Thanks for listening.